sweet one drunk reggae music I can sing praises to you In the voice so I can sing So many blessings I can count them one by one I'm a living proof of what the Lord has done And I can count my blessings three by three But that would take eternity So Lord, I wanna say thank you For that sweet one drop bringing music I can Praise sing. the Lord, hallelujah It's another blessed morning that we could be in the presence of the Lord We are fortunate to be alive and well and as I always like to say, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. May have been raining all over Dominica, but we thank God that we are safe and that we are raining in the inside and we're able to worship Him in spirit and in truth. We are blessed to be here and to worship Him in spirit and in truth. We want to welcome you, those of you who are viewing us this morning through the internet through Facebook, through WhatsApp. We want to welcome you to the Wharton Wave Pentecostal Church where Jesus Christ is Lord and every member a minister. May the Lord continue to bless you as we go out throughout this morning's service. Hallelujah. May we pray this morning as we bow our heads and look to the Father in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless your name. The great and mighty one, excellent God. El Shaddai Elohim, you are the all-sufficient one. You have kept us, you have given us your grace and your mercy. We say thank you, Father. Thank you for remembering us. Thank you for looking down upon us, Lord. Thank you, Father, for all your many blessings you have bestowed upon us, Holy Spirit. You've released your angels to protect us, Lord, from accident and incident, Father, from the wiles of the enemy, Lord. You've released goodness and mercy because your word says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord. And as we come before you as their children, we ask of God that you will show out your blessings upon upon us, Lord, as we empty out ourselves, Lord, and we pray, oh God, your spirit will fill us up to overflow as we give ourselves to you this morning. We ask that your Holy Spirit will reach out, oh God, and continue to strengthen, oh God, touch many lives, oh God, that needs strength this morning. You will minister grace, you will minister strength, and you will minister to their hearts wherever they are listening this morning. Let your Holy Spirit, oh God, be in our mix as we welcome you in this place this morning. Bless our brothers, our sisters. Sisters, Lord God, wherever your name is being uplifted this morning in Dominica, we ask of your many blessings around the Caribbean, around the world, Father. Let your hope be exalted. Let his name be glorified forever. And we bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in our hearts. We thank you, Father, for your many blessings, Lord God, once a night for In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. I want to encourage you this morning to look to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Regardless of what you may be going through, we know that our anchor holds in Jesus, steadfast and sure, while the billows roll. So this morning, I want to encourage you to hold on to Jesus. Offer yourself with the blood. Claim the blood of Jesus over your home, over your children, over your family, over your loved ones, over your community, that God's protection will continually be over you. So I want us to just do some declaration, and I want you to take it with heart, and as you say this declaration, let it bring be meaning to you, let it speak into your lives as we come together as the children of God. Hallelujah. I would like you to repeat after me this morning. I hold the blood of Jesus against the money delay of my miracle. I hold the blood of Jesus against failure at the edge of my success. I hold the blood of Jesus against lack of good helpers. I hold the blood of Jesus against fruitless efforts in 
my life. I hold the blood of Jesus against occupying wrong position. I hold the blood of Jesus against every delay and denied promotion. I hold the blood of Jesus against dead accounts. I hold the blood of Jesus against evil divination. I hold the blood of Jesus against lost foreign benefits. I hold the blood of Jesus against satanic prophecies. I hold the blood of Jesus against vagabond anointing. I hold the blood of Jesus against prophet salvation. I hold the blood of Jesus against tortoise and snail anointing. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. Let's continue to claim the blood of Jesus. Let's continue to release it over our lives, over our homes, over our loved ones. We will stay connected, we will stay protected. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against it. When you get up in the morning, cover yourself, cover your home, cover your entrance with the blood of Jesus. Because the evil one is out there trying to destroy God's people. But the word of God says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The blood of Jesus is a great and mighty weapon. Use the blood of Jesus. Use the name of Jesus. We will be victorious. You will be victorious. This morning I just want to, to encourage you to trust in the Lord. Depend upon Him. Hope in Him because I know He will come through for us when His people and His children call upon His name. Hallelujah. And as we go into worship this morning, release yourself this morning in the presence of the Lord. Release yourself this morning in God's presence and just give Him all the praise. Let Him work for you this morning. So I want to, to, to put your hands together as we welcome the Water Wave and Pentecostal Church worship team as they lead us into worship this morning. As they lead us in the presence of the Lord. Lift your hands, your heart and your spirit before God as He comes down in His beauty and in His anointing this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you precious Jesus. Welcome worship team. day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Like David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And so I welcome you into the house of the Lord, into the presence of the Lord this morning, wherever you are viewing us this morning, we invite you to join us as we worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's a marvelous God. He's an awesome God. He's a great God and he deserves all the praise. He deserves all the glory and all the honor. Let everything that have breath praise his name this morning. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name, Jesus.
Nothing but the blood of Jesus can wash us, can make us white as snow. No matter how down you have fallen, how low you have fallen, how much you have sinned, the blood of Jesus is the only thing that can cleanse you, that can make you whole this morning. Nothing but the blood of Jesus this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. The blood of Jesus has rescued me and it can rescue you this morning. Hallelujah. He has rescued our souls from sin. He has rescued our lives from the hands of the enemy. Hallelujah, Jesus. And he can do the same for you. Wherever you are watching us, viewing us this morning, our God is able to rescue you. He's able to set you free. He's able to deliver you this morning. Hallelujah. We bless your name. He's able to put the broken pieces back together again. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your holy name. We worship you, Lord. You are worthy, Jesus. We bless your name. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Oh, you have rescued my life. You have rescued my life.
Your blood flows through 
your holy name. We magnify your holy name. You are worthy of praise, Jesus. Yes, we are children of the living God. We bless your holy name. So without any further delay, we want to welcome Sister Paula Pharaoh as she ministers to us this morning on prayer and fasting. Let's put our hands together and welcome Sister Paula. When I was asked about prayer and fasting, Pastor called me. You know, sometimes you go through um, difficulties and nobody knows. And um, when Pastor called me, I was at my table preparing my schoolwork. And um, something just told me, repent. I said, repent? What about repent? So I stayed there. Um, the Bible tells you, delayed obedience is disobedience. So I was baffling with repent. But this week I was really sick, wasn't feeling well. And then um, I was in church on Sunday. And um, I asked the teachers to send the children up to the class for me. I could not go downstairs. I said, I cannot go down this step, come back up this step. With how many classes? I sent the children up for me. And a child did something. And under my breath, I said something. And one time I said, Lord, forgive me. And I said, okay, repent. So this morning I'm going to speak to you, to us, all of us, about repent. Even if we're in church, um, it calls for repentance. And there are different ways that we can repent. Let us pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your word that will never return to us void, but it will accomplish what it says it will. Father, I came here to speak on your word, Lord Jesus. You, O oh Lord, you take over and you speak through me, O oh God. Let your spirit and your power flow through us, Lord Jesus. Everything, O oh Lord, that I said belongs to you. I make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor said prayer. What is prayer? Prayer, as we know, is daily conversation with God. We speak to God. We speak to God early hours of the morning. We speak to God through our sleep. And we speak to God through different circumstances throughout the day. Repent sounds like a harsh word. It sounds like a harsh word or negative word. Doesn't it? But sometimes when we say about repent, we think of the person with their life that is open, an open book that we see that's living in sin. We see for these people to repent. And we never think about ourselves, the little mishaps that we may do that we need to repent. Repent of our God, the ongoing and chronic struggles of our life. We struggle throughout our life. It is no joke. The life is a struggle. We struggle. And there are certain times that we are dumb. And that's the time we need to ask God for repentance. If we turn our Bibles to 1 John 1 and verse 9. First John 1 and verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So he's asking us to confess our sins. We are not perfect. Okay, only Jesus was perfect and he walked on the earth without sin. Sharing our struggles and our sins with him is not meant to be an act of punishment, but rather one of love. Repentance brings out in the open everything he already knew was there. So everything God knew that was there, God knows when we are going to sin. God knows everything about us. He knows when we are going to sin. He knows the difficulties that we'll go through. He knows when we'll be in the valley. He knows when we'll be on the mountain top. 
So we just have to dedicate everything and give everything over to him. It tells us, repentance tells us, tells him we trust him. So if we go through repentance, we are telling God, God, we, I'm trusting you with my struggles. I am trusting you with my problems. I am trusting you with my difficulties. The worst part of ourselves, and it allows him to do work and transforming us from the inside out. We need to be transformed from the inside out, not out and then in. From inside to outside. God has good plans for us. If we go to um, James, the book of James 5 and verse 16, it tells us that confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective Fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So God is asking us and God is telling us and demanding us to pray for one another. Because sometimes somebody may be on your mind for you to pray for them. And you say, why is that person on my mind? No? Why is that person lingering on my mind? No? But you never know what difficulties, what trials that person is going through. That person may be faced in the worst circumstance of their life. And we are just there and we are saying, okay, everything is okay. But remember, delayed obedience is disobedience. Today, let's take a moment to get real with God. Let us think of the things that we do that nobody knows, the hidden sins, that nobody knows, but one person knows, God knows. God knows all the hidden sins of our lives. So we may try to fake and fool others, but God knows. And, you know, I always tell myself, and I tell my coworkers, people may say what they want about you, but what God says about you, that's what he's going to do for you. And I tell the children that what God says about you, somebody, teacher will say you cannot learn or you will not learn. God did haven't said that to you. God has never said that you will not learn. Okay? And teachers put curses on our children. I can tell you that. Teachers put curses on our children. And then, because most of them are not Christians, and they, know, they don't know the word. I told them this week there, you're not confessing negative on people's children. Stop it. Stop, stop it. The children, some may fall by the wayside, but let us, because the children are the men and women of tomorrow. When we have gone grow gray and old, and we cannot do much, we have to depend on the children to take God's word forward. We have to depend on the children to have the church going. So that is why we have to try to keep them there. We have to try to keep them under God's will. And we have to pray for them. Even if we see that we are, they are sliding, we have to pray for them. God knows everything about us. And in spite of all, he still loves us deeply. God loves us very deeply. Because so many things could have happened to us. We travel every day under those mountains still. We travel in the rain. Sometimes when we are driving, we cannot even see the road properly. And we know that is the love of God and that is the grace of God. Nobody else can do it for us. That is why we have to be grateful. We must be grateful to God. Because I'm telling you, that the drivers on the road today, they are not easy. They are not easy. And then some people say, I'm not driving, but... When you are on the road, you know what God is able to do for you. Because not too long, the tree, my, um, Dr. Taylor, it broke into pieces. And when I was going down there, Van Taylor went down there three times trying my Jeep putting brakes. And when we were going, I was going to work. I said, oh my God, God, you are so great. 
He said, but that wasn't there. I said, oh, it's because of the goodness and the mercy of God. We travel. We know that. Oh, God is so good to us. But the more we allow sin and shame and guilt to hide our struggles, the more we can the more we can see ourselves become less engaged in conversation with God. So the more we allow that sin, that sin to, uh, to, to uh, think our struggle, define us, is the more, the less we get closer to God. Our conversation with God, we cannot do that. We battle to, to converse with God. And he wants us to converse with him daily. So that the, the repentance clears the path between us and become that, that becomes blocked by sin. So repentance block, um, clears the path. If we repent, it's going to clear the path that is blocked by sin. If we go turn our Bibles to Acts 8. Acts 8, verse 20 to 23. But Peter said to him, Your money perish with you, because you thought that the, that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the fault of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. So God wants us. Our money cannot bring us anywhere. The Bible says money answers all, all things. But it cannot give us salvation. It cannot give us repentance. We have to want to repent for ourselves. Even if we say to repent, we, our inner being, have to want to do it. We have to search ourselves to see where the sin lies. So often there are struggles we wrestle with over and over again. We lay them down at the feet of Jesus only to pick them up when, we, when life punishes us too far. So when we are punished by life circumstances, the same things that we've put down, we pick them up. Oh boy, I don't have things tough for my children. We go and we probably take somebody's stuff or whatever. We are not waiting for God to provide for us. We will not go hungry. No. The children will not go hungry. No. Don't believe that the children will go hungry. They will not go hungry. God will show you something that you can make for them. They will not go hungry. So don't see somebody banning at them say, boy, I can get two grain in that tree for me to cook for my children. It's not yours. It doesn't belong to you. You did not plant it. The Bible said to ask. You can probably ask the person. And if the person wants, they will give it to you. All of these are hidden sins in our lives. By taking what we did not plant. Maybe it is, maybe sometimes, it is our bad attitude with people we love the most. Sometimes it shows some bad attitudes. We need to repent about that. We maybe let we, we display something and then, okay, it's okay. No, it's not okay. We need to repent about that. And probably, and, and in most cases, go to ask God for forgiveness. We sit, we reflect, and we're going to say, boy, how I dealt with my brother this afternoon there. Would Jesus, would Jesus would have done that? Think of what Jesus would have done. And we deal with others. 
and we go and we ask for forgiveness because God wants the best of us. Maybe it's how we handle our finances as the gifts he has given to us. So sometimes we don't pay our tithes and offering and we struggle. We struggle. We go through that struggle, that road. You know, I, <clears throat> I have heard parents say that, Miss, I didn't give the child anything now this morning. And you go to your principal and she said, she gives, she gives you an attitude and you say, boy, let me see what I have in my bag to give to that child. You know, because the, the principal is not a Christian and, 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 and doesn't um, understand but I said, but the child cannot go hungry. And they still beat the children because how can you beat a hungry child? Okay? So sometimes you, 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 you go through that struggle of life because you, you, you have not dealt well with your finances. You have not done what you have to do. Okay? You are badly spending it. So you ask God for that forgiveness. Sometimes we, we, we think of buying things for the children last. We, 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 we prioritize other things than to, to give the children what they have to give to them. Okay, God gave us the children for a purpose. They are precious in his sight. They are his. Maybe it's our own selfishness that seeks to put ourselves first instead of others. Sometimes we see me, myself, and I. And we do not see anybody else. Everything is me, myself, and I. God wants us to get away from that and see other people. All these things we need to repent about. Maybe we feel that we are greater than others and the people, some people are beneath us. God made all of us equal. God made all of us equal and as I will always say, he made the man the head of the house. I go biblical, but he made all of us as equal humans being. So the same way we see our brother, our blood, blood flow, blood, the other person, that's the same way God created them. And God created everybody in his likeness and in his image. And he created everyone special. So we may be more educated than others, yes, because we took um, our education seriously, but we are not greater than others. God made us equal. Each one of us has areas in our lives that we need to keep, to keep being honest with God about. So there are areas in our life we search deep and we search and we know that there are areas in our lives that we need to be honest with God. God knows the areas, you know. It's us that have to tap in and find the areas. Because sometimes that neighbor might begin us a lot of trouble. And we want to tell them off. We want to tell them something. But we have to be careful. Because if we said that we are godly people, we have to live godly lives. And God will not want to tell them off and tell them something. We pray for that neighbor. All of us have neighbors giving us trouble in at one time or the other. They test us. They test us to see how far they can go with us. How far we will, until we break, bend or break. They want to bend us. They want to break us. They say, you're a Christian? You say, you're a Christian? I'll fix you up. That is their intention. They want to fix us up. But you can fix them up you know, by praying for them. We can fix them up by praying for them. And that neighbor will not give us trouble. But the devil will always send them to attack us. Let us show with God our struggles. You know, today's brand fast. And today's a day that we can show with God our struggles. Because we go through struggles. Let us pray to God. For the way we stumble. Help us to turn from our sin and live in the light of his salvation. God wants the best of us. 
God wants to see us how he wants to see us. Not to see us the other way around. Because um, sometimes at home, um, one of these days, I think they had the Feast of Christ, the King, whatever there, and they had music. I was hearing the music. I said, but what has happened? We passed, we saw lights and things down there coming up. And Vinana is telling me, Mami, down there are plenty music, man. Down there, lively. I, I told her, well, it's their feast. I don't know what is happening down there, but, you know, and you have to explain to them, because they tell you, boy, that probably a nice life we, but you have to explain to them, because there are things in the world that will attract them. And when, the, um, during the week that I was sick, and I tuned into prayer meeting. How many of us, if we are sick, and church is open, and we can log in to prayer meeting? We will not come there if we are sick. But if you are sick, you can log in to prayer meeting on, this, on, on Skype. So we are disobeying the pastor when we don't create a Skype account and we don't log in. We are disobeying. So we need to repent about that. Okay. We need to repent. First day night, I was still sick. I was sick for the week. And Sister Avril was leading. I could have just listened. I could not have contributed. I just lied, lied on the bed and I was listening to Bible study. We all can listen to Bible study. Our children, they make Twitter accounts, they make Skype, they make um, WhatsApp, Snapchat, Hangout. They make all those things. I know about it. Instagram, they make all these things. A Skype account is not hard to make. A Skype account is not hard to create. You don't have to go to Fresh Market to look for a Skype account. You have your internet. You have your email address, and you can make a Skype account. This is disobedience, and we need to repent about it. We need to repent. We come to church on a Sunday, but the prayer meeting is good. I, I just logged out a prayer meeting on Tuesday night because the headaches had intensifying. So I said, okay. And I had the like quick, quick, quick. It was irritating me. But you can lie down on your bed if you are sick. And listen to prayer meeting. Listen to Bible study. Because it's on Skype. And it is cold now. How many of us would want to come to the church? To, co to come to prayer meeting. To come to Bible study. So we are disobeying. This is disobedience. We got a number of us that's there. And sometimes nine of us on Skype. Sometimes nine of us. When I look at nine of us. Sometimes ten of us. You can have your Skype and have the children in the drawing room with you. And they join. That's what I do. I don't let everybody for the talk, little noises. All of us, we sit and we, we listen to prayer meeting or Bible study. We have to teach the children the word. Bible study is teaching the children the word. So, fellow brothers and sisters, we are disobeying. And we need repentance for that. In closing, let us share with the Lord any ongoing and chronic struggles we've seen that we are facing. Ask uh, yourself, let us ask ourselves, am I wrestling with a bad attitude in certain areas of my life? Do I lack self-control in a place I need to exercise it? Have I spoken harmful words to those around me? Have I kept doing a sinful action over and over again in spite of knowing better? Acknowledge where your, where your struggle is with sin. We have to acknowledge where our struggle is with sin. Confess that you don't want to break fellowship with him and ask him, to help you walk in obedience. So brothers and sisters, brethren, let us try to walk in obedience with God. Let us try to take God much more seriously because the days are evil. If we can see what is happening in America, we know that 
Jesus is coming soon. We may say that since I was a child, we are here, Jesus coming. But we can see the signs. We can see what is going on. Let us try to be connected to God. And not us alone. Let us try for our children to be connected to God. Sometimes we try to do things and we leave our children behind. Let us don't leave them behind. Let us not let God ask us, what did you do with the little one that I gave to you? Let us try. When they grow big, they are not at your home again. They do what they do. But then they remember the word of God. They will remember, you know. Don't believe they will not remember. They will remember. And they will come back. And you will always be speaking to them. So let us take God for who he is. Because if you see God's eyes were closed, too many things would have happened. And his eyes are open and so many things are still happening. Let us take God for who he is. And let us be connected. Don't break our relationship. We don't want to break that relationship. Let us fight the fight. Let us be serious if God gets serious. And think of the things that we need to repent about. Amen?